Hello, grade nines. So happy that I could be here with you today, at least virtually, I guess, to talk about course selection process and also to help you make the best decisions you can in regards to your courses for next year. For those of you who don't recognize my voice, this is Ms. Schlatter, one of the three counselors at Delview. I put together what I hope will be a helpful slide deck to help you get the information that you need for making thoughtful decisions about your future courses. And not only for next year, but really starting to look towards graduation and life after high school. You will see as I go along and by the picture on the screen here that I've added some pictures that I've taken over the last few years. I decided to include them in my presentation, not because I'm a great photographer, but because I wanted to share with you some of the beauty of where we live. We are blessed to live in such an amazing part of the world, and I'm not sure that we, especially myself, often appreciate that. Also, I'd like to acknowledge that we are on the lands of the Twasin, Musqueam, and Coast Salish peoples who have been here since the beginning of time. I've been lucky enough to spend most of my life either in Twasin or North Delta, so I'm truly thankful for being able to not only work, but to live and play in such a gorgeous place. Now, as I said, I'm adding pictures. And so this is of a robin at the, um, what's it called? North 40 Land Reserve in, I guess it's East Ladner on the way from North Delta to Ladner. And it's an off-leash dog park. And there are tons of eagles and other birds there. And I just think it's a gorgeous place. I like this picture, even though it's a bit stretched. None of my photos are really meant to be on a large screen, but so be it, I'll just make it work. So just to remind you who your counselor is, um, if your last name starts with the letters A through G, you work with Mrs. Pooney and hopefully you've met her already or at least know who she is. H through N, if your last name starts with those letters, you are working with Miss Sharma and we're so happy that since January she's been here. She's absolutely amazing and she's here for the long haul. We know that those of you in that section of the alphabet have had multiple changes, um, but I think you're set now with someone who's a pretty kind um, person. And then O through Z or Oz, you are with me, Miss Schlatter. If you want or have any questions, you want to contact us, email is a great place to start. So there's our email, or you can go to the Delview staff directory and get the email from there, or at the end of the counseling hallway, both ends, in the back hallways by the gym and in front of the office, there's a QR code with our um, emails on it. So take a picture, you can send us a quick email. The QR code is also on our doors. And it's not that we don't want to see you in person, we absolutely do, but we know it gets pretty hectic. So sometimes the best thing is to shoot us an email. And if we can answer your question quickly, we'll do so. And if not, we'll make an appointment and we'll chat with you and help you with whatever it is you need our support with. And a large part of our job is to help you in this course selection process. So don't be shy about connecting with us. Here's the overview. And this is what you need to be aware of, or I'm hoping you'll be aware of and you know a bit more about by the time we finish. But bottom line is, what do you need to graduate? What do you need to take next year? How are you going to decide what course to take? What are some of the courses about or what's the range of courses? How do you get more information about the courses and the programs? And then how the heck do you actually pick your courses and go from there? So that's our goal and that's what we're going to do now. The big news for you folks is that the BC graduation program called the Dogwood program starts in grade 10 and it goes to grade 12. So you are just entering the grad program. It doesn't mean that grade 9 doesn't matter. Grade 9 does matter and you need to complete all of your grade 9 courses in order to go into grade 10 courses or you won't have a clue what's going on. But the counting of credits 
starts in grade 10. And on this program, everyone needs at least 80 credits to graduate. And you collect those in all three grades. So over grades 10, 11, and 12, you have time to collect 80 credits. Most students graduate with about 96 to 100 credits. Some students have a lot more. Each course you take in grade 10, 11, 12 is worth four credits. So the mathematicians, you know that you have to take 20 courses over those three years. No brownie points for getting 150 credits. Doesn't matter. You just need 80 to graduate. 79 is not good enough. This is not a situation like sometimes you ask your teacher, can you please bump me up half a percent or a percent? You don't get 80, you don't graduate, and there's nothing that we can do to help you. So eye on the prize, 80 credits. So how do you get those 80 credits? Well, these are the requirements. I want you to really pay attention to this screen because you're going to see it for the next two years as well. As if you can check everything off on this, you are good to go to graduate. As you go through the years, we will add more information about some of the other courses. But right now, I want to focus on grade 10 and then just introduce you to some of the other things. You must take, so the green courses are the five required courses you have to take this year. A math 10 has to be completed and then a math 11 to graduate. No math 12 needed to graduate. Social studies 10 must be checked off to graduate. And then a socials in grade 11 or 12 has to be completed and it doesn't matter which one. Again, you'll get more information on that next year. Science, you need to complete science 10. And then one of the sciences in grade 11, no science 12 needed to graduate. And English, you'll see you need the English 10 to graduate, but you must also have an English 11 and an English 12. And you've got choices in there that we will go into next year. We're not going to go into those now. So right now you know you have math, socials, science, and an English you have to take next year. You have to continue to take your PHE and you need the grade 10 to graduate. There are PHE courses in grade 11 and 12, but you don't need it to graduate. Then there are specific courses that you take in the next few years that I'm not going to go into. The thing that is of note to you folks is that you have three years, so grade 10, 11, 12, to complete at least five elective. So that's five courses other than the ones listed there. One of them must be an arts course or an ADST course. Most people don't have a problem with that. They do it without thinking. So five electives in any grade, doesn't matter which, have to be completed and those are all counted towards your graduation. And then you have two assessments that now must be completed for graduation and they really ding you in grade 10. So in grade 10 you have to do both the numeracy assessment and the literacy assessment and in grade 12 you have to do the literacy assessment. So if you do all of these courses you will meet the requirements for graduation. So that's awesome and that's your first goal. Your second goal while you're trying to juggle all of this is also making decisions about life after high school. All right, and we'll talk about that in just a little bit, but this is the bottom line for graduation. So how do you get those credits, those 80 credits? Well, 95% of you will just be in courses at Delview, take your eight courses, pass them, and you will graduate. So that's how most students do it. But there are some other ways that are um, interesting as far as getting credits. So one of the things that often happens for people is summer school. And there are two different types of summer school. There is the remedial or skills building summer school, which is for students who have failed a class in grade eight and nine, and it's academic classes. So if you have between 40 and 49% in English, social science, or math, you could go to summer school for a couple hours a day for the month of July 
in order to get a bit more of a foundation in the course so you have a chance of passing in grade 10. If you are there and you don't want to go to summer school and a counselor hasn't talked to you or even if your mark is lower than that, please reach out to a counselor to talk to you because we might be able to get creative in how we can get you closer to 50%. Yes, you'll have to do some work, but it might be a better option than summer school. So if you haven't heard from your counselor and you're in that situation in grade in that eight and nine, then please connect with them. The other option at summer school is for there's full credit courses and those are usually about five to six weeks long and those are for four credits each and those are for people who often want to take an academic course to free up space in their timetable for more electives and honestly though this is typically students who in the summer between 10 and 11 or 11 and 12 so not many people in grade 10 take the course because you actually have the most room for electives. So you have a lot of options there. As we get information about summer school, we will put that on the TVs, announcements, push that out to everyone. So pay attention. After spring break, we will get that to everyone. Now, the other way that is kind of cool that you get credits is what we call external credits. So those are credits that are outside of the school system. And that is really anything that someone's been doing for a high level and they have attained a high level of skill and time and commitment and can show that. Everything from an ICBC course to playing piano for many years, dance, Sports can be coaching, it can be refereeing, it can be playing on a national team, etc. Your average gold team, things like that, they're great, but they don't count for anything like that. High level of cadets, lifeguarding, all of those are credits. Your organization would be the first place to start to connect with to see whether or not they um, have information for you about what's needed. And if not, you can come and see us, just email us. So you're going to school, you can go to summer school, you're getting credits outside in the real world. And then there are the career and programs and district academies. And these really are in grade 11 and 12, but I did want to highlight those for those of you who are looking at potentially going into a trades or trying a job on for size. Maybe you're looking at getting into tracking early childhood education. There's all sorts of options, and I know that Mr. Burt will be visiting all of the classes next year to give you information on that. And then the other thing is that there are district academies. So these are very specific programs that are part-time programs that students can go to while they're also going to school. And the problem this year, for some of some folks anyways, will be that they're all in Ladner and Twasson. There's nothing being offered in North Delta. Traditionally, there are more programs, but because of the pandemic, they've really restricted those. And if anything changes and there's more being offered, we will certainly get that information out to you. And what I do want to show you is, because I'm putting this slide deck online, and I'll show you where to find it, there will be links that you can follow to get the information you need. So this will be a link. It will take you to the Delta School District. You will look at programs, and there is all the information you need around academies. There's all the information you need around the career programs. If you need help with those, certainly for career education, see Mr. Burt, or if you need help with district academy, see your counselor. But I did wanna highlight those because there's a lot of really good information there. The other way to get credit is for students who speak, read, write a second language at a very high level. And what you can do is challenge or take the final exam for that language, say Spanish 11 or 12, and you write the exam. We've had a number of people do it every year. Typically we've had people do it for Japanese, Mandarin, Punjabi, but you have to be able to read and write at a high level. You can go back to the Delta School District website, link is on the previous page, and there's information there on the exam. The information each year comes out in the fall. We register you once we've, you've put that out to folks, 
and then you actually write the exam in January. So lots of different ways to get credits. The other way is online courses and in Delta we tend to go through Delta Access and what's really important is that when you are doing online courses that you really must be an independent worker. You need to be focused just like this absolutely gorgeous eagle. This is from Mud Bay Park somewhere in there. Um, took that picture so just sitting there chilling right above my head. But you need to be organized, you need to be motivated um, because you're doing it on your own, you're doing it after school hours, you do not get a study block to take an online course, but if you decide to take it because you think that's a really good way that you learn, you're more than welcome to do so, but you still have to take eight courses at Delview. Sometimes people take online courses, but that tends to happen more in grade 11 and 12. And sometimes what people do, if they haven't had as much success or made the progress that they wanted to in a course at Delview, they might sign up for an online course after the fact to see if they can actually improve their mark. So that's an option for some people. Um, and again, generally that doesn't happen to grade 11 and 12, but it's something to keep in mind and we will definitely be talking about it a little bit more next year. So decisions, it's that time. You have to start making some decisions about your future and you have got to be informed and realistic and inform yourself or educate yourself. What do I need to graduate? That's got to be your priority. And then what do you need for life after high school? Are you going to work? Are you going to go to school? What does post-secondary look like for you? And then be realistic. What are your interests, your strengths? What are the challenges, right? What are things that are difficult for you? Because it doesn't mean that you can't take those courses, but you might take a different pathway than you first thought. So you have to be really thinking about who you are and what your skills are. And please make decisions for yourself, not for your friends. And I know that you want to be with people you like and your friends or teachers you like. Those are valid. There's nothing wrong with that. But that should not be the driving force behind what you take. I've talked to lots of people who are miserable because that's how they made their decisions, right? And you folks out there all remind you, me of these two dogs. These are my dogs. And what I see is we're all kind of working towards this trail here or walking along and we're heading in the same direction, but we might all be forging our own path along the way. So you can see Roxy's kind of looking like she's going forward, but her body says she might be thinking about going that way. This one, Fairfax, my dog here, is thinking that eh, something smells good out there. I think I'm going to head that way, but we'll slowly get to that point. You could be over here. You could be over here. It doesn't matter. But like these pups who are on the dike in East Ladner and the sun is setting and it's absolutely gorgeous there when I took that picture, um, you have some decisions to make while you keep moving forward. First choice you have in grade 10 is looking at whether or not you're going to take the standard program or maybe the innovation program. And like my previous dog here, you got to take a look, you got to scan, you got to think about what you're going to do. He's thinking about which bird he's going to chase, which is not great, but that was him. So the grade 10 standard program, you have five courses right there. We know you have to take English, a math, I'll talk about that in a minute, your PHE, your science, your socials, and you have three electives. We know that already. So that's your standard eight blocks. If you take a class that is outside of the timetable, and you'll see as we go along that there's some morning classes and after school classes. That would be your ninth course. You don't get a study block or anything like that in grade 10. You must take eight classes in the timetable. All right. I'm not sure what these snow geese actually have to do with this standard program. I like the picture. And it's so cool that the snow geese and the Canada geese and some of these other ducks can just hang out and um, chill on the farm fields in Delta. The other program is the innovation program and you still have to take eight blocks of studying but in two 
you take four courses. You'll be, or getting credit, I guess you sh I should say, for four courses for English, science, socials, and an independent directed study, which is a passion project of some sort. But you're taking your English, your science, your socials, all those disciplines are put together and you work your way through those being taught in um, a cohesive manner. The other six blocks are your math, your PHE, and you have four electives. So super important that you really be thoughtful about your electives because you have more of them. So you need to be flexible with that. And the one thing I will say is we try really hard to keep the math away from the semester with your English, science, and socials, because those are all in two blocks, but we can't guarantee it. We do try, but we can't guarantee it. So you might have one semester that's a little bit heavier, and that's totally fine. People have done that always, right? So, But just think about that as something to consider. So this is actually your first or your second real choice, right? It's your math option. Which math course are you going to take? Foundations and pre-calculus math is for those looking to continue schooling after high school and looking at business programs, science programs, maybe engineering, health sciences, things like that. Workplace is for students who might be struggling with their current math course, going into the trades, um, and those who are going straight to work after high school. All right, so those are your options. Now, some trades do actually need a foundations and pre-calc course, so you have to do a little bit of homework and talk to Miss Abad, the career advisor to get a little bit more information on that. Now, what we're going to move on now is to the election portion of the slides. Yes, you had a choice for what program you're going to take and math program, but all the rest from here on in are totally considered electives that I want you to read the course booklet on, and I'll show you where to find that in a bit. Talk to people, talk to the teachers, get as much information as you can about what happens in that course. I want you to explore. I want you to try new things. Super important that you know that you do not have to have the grade 9 level of an elective before taking a grade 10 elective. We understand that some of you have been on a wait list for Foods 9 all year. That does not stop you from going into Foods 10. All right, super important that you get to start. If you didn't get a chance to take textiles because it was full, and those two were full all along, so that's why I'm, I'm mentioning them, um, especially at the grade line, nine level, then take those next year, right? So really think about what you want, and it's the time to try some different courses, start matching to your goals. So these are on the dike system as well, and lots of birds flying, again, in the same direction, kind of all over the place. And that'll be kind of a little bit like you folks, same place, doing the same thing. But, eh, just everyone doing it at their own pace. Do you need a second language? No, no, no. You do not need a second language to graduate. I'm going to just reinforce that again so no you do not need a second language to graduate because I can't believe how many people are in a second language because they think they need to take it and then are shocked when in grade 11 and 12 they realize they didn't need to take it um, especially if they were struggling if they did well and they enjoyed it knock your socks off then it's just an elective right that's fine but you don't need it to graduate this bird was on the hedge in my backyard and I was outside having coffee and there they were, so I snapped a picture. Has nothing to do with course selection. Things to consider though about a second language. If you're looking at going to UBC down the road, straight from high school, you're going to need a language at the grade 11 level. If you're looking at SFU, a language at the 11 level as well, or, sorry, or, an introductory language level, and we offer Spanish, will meet the requirement. UBC Okanagan UVic, no language. Most community colleges don't have second language requirements, 
but you do need to do your homework. All right, because every now and then in an arts program, a language is required, and that might be like at Douglas or something. Miss Abad is the person to talk to to get more information. So keep that in mind as you're going through your courses. These are the courses we offer, French 8 through 12. So if you've already been doing French, you might want to continue with that. If you want to either learn a second language or you did not take French and you've decided that, yikes, I want to go to SFU straight out of high school, then you can take introductory Spanish. Once you've done Spanish, if you want more second or more of um, Spanish or you need another level because maybe you've decided you're going to UBC, then you have to take Spanish 11. None of the post-secondary institutions require the language 12, but it might be helpful for going into an arts program because otherwise you have to take it at university and you have to pay for it. Again, you'll get more information as you move through the grades on that, but it's something to think about long term. Love this eagle, same beach, same place as the last few photos. Business ed department, everything from learning how to put together spreadsheets to website design, maybe better than the district ones. Um, learning how to market or promote a business, learning about finance, the world of business creating games, etc. Lots of options there. Dance, you no experience needed. So the teacher will work with beginners or experienced folks and depending on the student interest, different genres will be explored. It could be hip hop, modern, lyrical, it doesn't matter. Whole range and that will be decided in part with the teacher and with the students in the class and what they want to do. So you just need some positive energy and some willingness to have some fun in there. So Film Studies 11 is a course that is new and I thought I'd put it in here for you folks because as a grade 11 course that does not have a grade 12 course that runs after it, it makes sense that grade 10s might want to take this course as you have a greater number of electives than students in grade 11. So this course um, it is another option for you and with all new courses what I do is I ask teachers to tell us a little bit about it and to tell us a little bit about film studies is Mr. Pocock and what I do want you to take note of is all those are his videos. He's got thousands. He's a film buff. Do you like movies and want to learn more about what goes on behind the scenes? What a cinematographer's job is, or what Foley artists do? Then you should sign up for film studies. In this course, we're going to look at the history of film and popular movies, as we learn more about what it takes to make the movies we all love to see. We'll look at how filmmakers structure their films to communicate different ideas and feelings to the audience. Explore movies from different genres and decades, as we analyze everything from Citizen Kane to the MCU. Let's explore and learn just what it is about movies that make them so great. Thank you, Mr. Pocock. So, and if you hear crying in the background, that's my dog telling me he thinks it's close to dinner time. Anyways, <laughs> kind of ironic as we're staring at a platter of food. So, home ec, again, you didn't need to take the courses in grade nine. These are open to anyone, like all of the electives. Foods, you get to learn to prepare different meals, whether it's lunch, breakfast, dinner. And you get to learn a little bit about nutrition, how to select food, serve it, and a real range as far as meals. And textiles, what's important to note there is that it's highly individualized. And there is everything from fashion design to knitting, crocheting, crafting, all of those. So the range is really um, something that I think sets that course apart in some ways. And this exciting charcuterie platter is uh, one that I made for my niece's birthday last summer. Isn't that exciting? All right. Media arts, where one of the courses that you would learn there is how to take pictures. So um, I think that would be helpful for someone like me who just pulls her camera out and and shoots. Anyways, the 
animation course, everything from learning how to, I guess, get creative in creating your own characters in your world to media arts, using media art technology, photography, graphic design, films. Your book is outside of the timetable. So if you were to take your book 10, it would be an after school course and it would be your ninth course. And it, how cool is that to actually work on something that the whole school, 700 students see and it's there and it's part of history. So if you're into the taking pictures, the layouts, the journalism, all of those, that would be a course to take. Did anybody see the ladybug in the picture there? That's just me sitting on my deck and a planter of flowers. Performing arts. So there we have drama and music. Drama runs in the timetable and theater company and theater production run outside of the timetable. Theater company is performing in the school play and you need theater or acting experience to be in that course. If you haven't worked with Mr. Turpin, you need to go see him and audition. So you need to have quite a bit of experience to be in there. Theater production is the behind the scenes stuff, the sound, the lighting, the makeup, the stage, all of that is what's put together in production, everything behind the scenes. Music, band is in the morning, two to three times a week. And then you've got the instrumental music, instrument and guitar course that yes, you can learn and perfect your guitar playing, but also any other instruments are welcome. The teacher has made it so that if you wanna pursue something, teach yourself another instrument or perfect something that you already play, that they are more than willing to have you there to help you on that journey. And musical theater is really about singing, acting, dancing, learning how to develop a character in order to bring a song to life. And physical health education, we already know PHE is mandatory, but they do have an elective, which is new. So because it's new, I'm going to give Mr. Lobman a chance to actually talk about it. Morning Raiders, W is offering a volleyball course next season. The course is going to be available to all grade 10, 11, and 12 students, regardless of if you've never played before, all the way up to if you're a little bit more experienced and want to refine your skills. The course is going to run in the morning from 7 o'clock until 8.10, right before school. It's going to meet a senior PhD course requirement or a grade 10 elective. Um, you will have the opportunity in the class to learn volleyball skills and techniques, to develop your team dynamics understanding, as well as to work towards a refereeing certification, which will allow you, if you so choose, to work and get a job after school or even while you are in school. If you are interested in learning how to play volleyball or learning to refine your technique and skills, then please sign on up. Thank you very much, Mr. Lobman. Sounds like a neat course. And this is along the dike as well. And I love it because it's just beautiful with the colors and then the art that someone, and I love biking. So this really spoke to me and it's, again, it's just so gorgeous out there and peaceful. Tech education. Well, I was actually out on the Fraser River yesterday, actually just behind um, Delview here, just walking a trail when I came across these, I think there were about five or so beaver lodges, beaver huts that were there. And I thought, wow, what an example of engineering and design to be able to have those and be out there and withstand all of the weather. So I thought that was pretty cool to see that on this river. That's obviously a working river, the Fraser River right in our backyard. Um, but for the other classes there, what you do is you, everything from building cabinets and tables to computer drafting to laser cutting to 3D printing. You've got a range of options there. Visual arts, you've got the three art courses. The 2D is really the drawing and painting, printmaking, collage, and then the 3D is carving, modeling, 
clay, uh, things like paper mache, etc. And in the art studio, I see that as a bit of everything. So if you have a preference, you take one of those. You could take all three, I guess. Or if you want a bit of everything, art studio makes sense. And that picture really spoke to me. It's along um, the same dike system that a lot of the other pictures are from. And somebody came along and took the driftwood and painted giraffe on actually two pieces of driftwood. I just took a picture of the one and it's been there for years now and it's managing to survive. So I love the idea of bringing a little bit of art into everyday nature. Uh, I was just fascinated with that. Now, helping others, you can take peer tutoring and that is really for people whose attendance is impeccable, who are assertive enough that they can work with a student one-on-one -on -one or a small group. We don't give a lot of grade 10s peer tutoring. We would let you sign up, but there might be an application process or an interview. But if you really want it, then absolutely we can um, let you have it. And you need to be sharp, just like this golden eagle. And this was actually taken in the bog last year. And then if you need some support, you need extra help, or you've had strategies, course of some sort this year or you're an English language learner because English is your second or third or fourth language then please see your teachers for more help or see your counselor and we'll get you the support that you need and you get to choose. So this sunset is actually reminding me that we're almost done. I think I only have like two or three slides so hang in there. Um, this was actually during, I think it's during the heat dome last year, and it was pretty foggy or smoggy or whatever it was. And uh, the sunsets were, of course, just amazing. So this was off my uh, back deck. I did want to show that there is a website, and it's on the Delview website under student resources, where you can get more information about post-secondary schooling and um, what you need, etc. I'm not going to go through it now, but it's there. And as I said earlier, these links will be there. The slide deck will be put up, so you can actually just go through it and click the slide deck. All right, lots of information there to help you make a decision about what courses to take. One more slide after this and we're done. So. Bottom line is you are going to be in the computer probably next week, maybe on Friday, to do your course selection. So you need to be good to go. So in the meantime, you needed to make sure or you will need to make sure that your MyEd registration is done. You've looked at the course planning guide. You've looked at the graduation requirements and that you have looked at the planning worksheet. And I think that's really important. So on this, so again, when it's posted, that could be helpful. You could go to each one of these separately through the link, or you can go to the course selection information on the website. So what you do on the menu, it says course planning, going into grade 10. All the information you need is here. So this slideshow is uh, just needs to be relabeled, and that's for parents, the show or the slide deck presented to grade eight and nine parents. So we'll just have to change the name of that. What I'm showing you now, the video will be uploaded and the slide deck so that you can actually follow the links if you want. Course planning book, super important. Take a look at that. It shows you not only all of the courses and what you need to graduate, all of that information is there. So it's all there. What do you need? What are the courses? But most importantly, like, what do you do in these courses, right? Like, that's super important to know. Do you know, like, what do you do in entrepreneurship and marketing? i will learn to say it first. Um, what do you do in this course? So all of that's super important. Then there's going to be a sheet looking at grad requirements. And then this is super important. I think this is one of the most important pieces of information there. I would print this or have this in front of you when you take notes and you start thinking about what you're going to take. So when you go into the lab to pick your courses, I'm sorry, I don't know if you can hear my dog. He really wants to be on my lap. Um, here's the 
program. You're going to pick either the standard or the innovation. What's important for the innovation is that if you want to take it, you will have to scan a QR code because MyEd does not seem to like innovations. So QR code will be outside the front office or outside the counseling hallway, and then you can put your courses or select them in there. For the rest of you, and most of you will be in the standard program, and what you'll do is you make sure you're going through MyEd, you will pick those four courses, you're good to go. Then this reminds you, you have to take a math course, which one are you going to do? Uh, talk to your math teacher, get some help there. And then you'll see that there are three electives that must be selected. And you need to think carefully about those. And then your alternates. Super important that you folks think about your alternates because there's no guarantee you're going to get your first three choices. We might not run the course or it might be full or it might not work with the combination of courses that you want. So be very thoughtful about those because you're going to possibly get them and please don't pull that I'm not going to pick any they won't give me any we will the computer will do it and that's not what we want certainly if you want some extra support and student services you'll be able to pick that as one of your courses and then on the back of that sheet is all the courses here's the ADST courses here are the fine arts courses or arts education courses language courses, etc. I'm hoping to put Film 11 on here too, so that's something that you folks can pick. Um, it just won't be on this demo here. So lots of information there. And my ed folks, there is no reason for you not to have been in my ed. If you can't log into my ed now, you need to get on it in the next day or so. If you're stuck and your resetting of the password does not work, then go see Miss Goltz in the front office. But you need to reset it if it if it's telling you to do so. You need that, otherwise you're not picking your own courses, and we want you to pick your courses. So again, you can go there with all the information, or you can go to each individual spot right there. Last slide, folks. Here's what I need you to do: pick wisely. You are dictating what the timetable looks like for next year. You guys are actually creating the Raiders timetable. Courses you pick, we run. Courses people don't pick, we don't run. That's how we decide. Students tell us what to run. So be thoughtful, be careful, because you might not be able to change your mind later on. You'll see here that courses are due March 4th. You will be into the lab before then to pick your courses. But we give you time to go home, talk to whoever you want to talk to and need to talk to and to change them. After March 4th, we start deciding what courses were no longer running in the school because not enough people picked it or what courses we might need more teachers for. So super, super important to get that done. So that's the end of my presentation. Be thoughtful. Take the time to do this right. And I will see all of you sometime soon in the computer lab to pick your courses. Take care, everyone.